Okay, so chapter three, this is 3.1. So we are looking at uh, data and being able to describe that data. So important characteristics when describing, exploring, and comparing data is CVDOT, center, variation, distribution, outliers, changing characteristics of data over time. Okay. So we remember what the center is, the middle of the data. So we can find the center of data by using mean, median, or mode. That's what the center of the data could be. We just look and see which one is the best representation. Outlier, the value that lies outside of the other values in a set of data. Okay. So methods of description, descriptive stats, methods of inferential stats. Let's look at measures of center. Okay. Measures of center, again, is mean, median, and mode. Remember back in what, sixth grade, you learned mean, median, mode, and range? Well, for center is mean, median, mode. Range doesn't represent the center. It represents the spread or the distribution. Several ways to determine the center would be our mean. We are not going to use the word average. We are going to strictly use the word mean. We have some new notation, so some mathematical symbols. We need to know what they represent. You'll be seeing these a lot because we will be using lots of formulas in here. So this, I think this is called sigma. It is the sum of a set of values. We can also call this summation. You'll see this in pre-cal and calculus. Have y'all ever seen that one? No. Not yet. Did y'all see it in pre-cal? No. Did you see it in calculus? Uh, no. Okay. I, I saw it a lot in my upper level math classes. X represents the individual data values. N is the number of values in a sample. So items in the data sample. The large N is the population. The number of values in a population. X bar is going to be your sample mean. So X bar represents a sample mean. And we find that by summing all of the individual data and then dividing by how many pieces of data there is. We've done this before, right? And I'm going to show you how you can get your calculator to do it once you input your data. Okay, mu is a U with kind of like an extra little line on there. Mu is your population mean. So you've got to know the difference between the two symbols so you don't get them mixed up. Okay, so the mean of all values in the population. So it's population. So it's called mu, and this one's called x bar. Okay. The first example, interval in minutes between eruptions of the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park. So we have all of these. We want to find the sample mean, so that's your x bar. The way you find your sample mean is you add them all up, divide by how many you have. We, all, we already know how to do that, right? So I'm going to show you how to do it using the calculator. Okay, we are going to go to stat. So stat. Then we're going to go to one for edit. We are going to enter all the data into L1. Okay. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. And there should be 12 of them. So double check. And you can write up here n equals 12. Okay, once you have them into L1, now go back to stat. And we are going to go to calculate. And we want to do one, which is one variable stat. One variable statistics. We only have one variable. We only have like X values. Okay, one variable sets, enter, enter. And this gives us a lot of different uh, pieces of information. The one we're looking for is X bar. So see how it lists X bar? That's your sample mean. So equals 91.25. It also gives you other things. So summation of X, that's if we were to add all of these up. Summation of X squared, that means if you square all your values here and then you add them up. S of X, um, standard deviation, I believe. Theta X, mm, I can't remember those at the time. Um, N is the number of pieces of data. And then it gives you your min, quartile one, median, quartile three, and your max value. So this will be really helpful when we have a lot of um, data. Okay, so let's look at what it says. The mean uses every data value, but this can be pro problematic if there's an outlier because it will affect the mean dramatically. So we need to talk about, so let's see. Go ahead and write this. A statistic is resistant If the outliers do not cause it to change very much. So because of what this says, the mean um, uses every data value, which can be problematic if there's an outlier because it will affect the mean dramatically. That means that the mean is not resistant. Okay, a little bit on an outlier, an extreme value that falls well outside the general pattern of almost all the data may reveal important information, may strongly affect the value of the mean, and standard deviation and may distort the scale of the histogram. So since it affects the mean, that means the mean is not resistant. So if your data has an outlier or um, maybe an outlier for the min, outlier for the max, then that could dramatically affect your mean. Or if you just have one outlier, may dramatically affect the mean, the statistics. Maybe an actual recorded value or it may be a typo. So sometimes outliers are typos. Some kind of mistake. Oh, here's the information on how to do one bar stats, what we already did. I didn't realize it was down there. All right, let's look at example two. 
After the collapse of the two World Trade Center buildings, the following samples were obtained to measure the level of lead in the, in the air. So look at our data. Find the mean of the samples. So you can put it into L1 and find your mean that way, or you can just add them up, divide by. I mean, are there six? Either one would be correct. You'd get the same answer. Okay, what did y'all get for the mean? Y'all there yet? Or y'all still working? Okay, what did y'all get? Go ahead and tell me. Are y'all shy? You're so quiet. It wasn't like this last year, right? No. <laughs> they wouldn't stop. <laughs> All right, the mean. Do y'all agree uh, 1.54? Do y'all agree with that? Okay. What is the outlier here? Yeah, that's an outlier. It's way up there. Do you think that outlier affected the mean? Look at the, the other data. It's saying that the mean is higher than all, all the data except for one. Does that even make sense? Okay. Remove the outlier and find the mean of the remaining values. So go ahead and find the mean of this. Okay, remove the outlier. The mean is 0. 0.76. It goes on and on. I'm just going to round it. 0. 0.77. Was the mean strongly affected by the outlier? Yes. It was. All right, median. Do y'all remember the median? Median is the uh, middle middle number when listed in order. Mm, would that be ascending order? So going from least to greatest. So notation on that would be X with a tilde on top. To find the median, first sort the data from least to greatest. If the number of values is odd, the median is in the middle. That means you could have like, three numbers here and then three numbers here and this is your median. So that's an odd whenever your uh, number of values is odd. If your number of values is even, you're going to find the mean of the two in the center. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say there's six. So you have an upper and a lower. So you're going to find the mean of that, of those two. All 
add them up, divide by two. All right, let's look at the old faith, faithful eruption times. Okay, it's already listed in order for us. So we just need to find the median. A lot of people like to do like one. So this is even number, there were 12, right? So now we just need to find the mean of those two. So X tilde equals, what's the mean of 93 and 94? 93.5. Okay. And then when we take out the outlier 65, let's go ahead and do that. It's 94. So see how if you have an outlier or if you don't, it's not much of a difference. So that means that the median is resistant. The mean was not, but the median is. The median is not strongly influenced by outliers because it does not really use every data value like the mean does. Um, in the calculator, remember when we did our one variable stats, the MED is going to be your median. So see, I didn't even change my L1. I kept it the same. I didn't put anything else in there from that first problem we did. And the MED, that's your median. So that's how you can find it on your calculator if you have a lot of data values. Okay, example two, use the following sample data describing the lead levels in the air. So we are going to find the median. So let's list them in order. Okay, so now we find, oh, it's in between these two. Add them up, divide by two. So 0 0.915. Is that what y'all got? Okay. Remove the outlier and find the median using the remaining value. So I'm going to rewrite the list, but without that 5.4 to see how it changes. Did it change very much? Was the median strongly affected by the outlier? That's a no. Okay, mode. What is mode? What's the definition of mode? Occurs the most. Bimodal, what do you think that means? When there are two mo modes. What about multimodal? More than two modes. And then sometimes you can have no mode. 
So example one with Old Faithful Eruptions. See where we have the most. So 92, 95, and 98 all have two, two occurrences. So those are your modes. Mode is not, not often used with the numerical data, but can be used for nominal measure, names, labels, category. Example, most common pets. Calculator does not give that to you. You could sort the list and see what occurs first. So we do need to show how to sort the list. So um, let's see. Edit. Remember how we put those numbers in? Do y'all still have those in or did you change them? Y'all tell me. You still have them? Okay. So we could sort them. You could sort the data. Go enter the data in L1. So this is for my first example. Then press stat, sort, and we want L1. So you hit second stat for the list. And see how we have L1 here? Did y'all see how I got that? Second stat, which is the list. And then close your parentheses. And it says done. So whenever I go back over to stat, edit, look how it sorted them. Isn't that really helpful? If you have a lot of data, you don't want to put it in there sorted. It's all out of order. The calculator can sort it for you. You can also sort it. Did you all see the other option? Sort D. What do you think that means? Descending. Yeah. So it'll start at the top and go down. We can clear the list. So um, there we go. Use a sample describing the amount of error in the data. Find the mode. So we just have one point, one and one tip. Okay. Mid range. Okay, so remember learning about range. Range is uh, found by doing your max minus your minimum values. So your mid range would be half of your range. So you find it by doing max minus min and then divide by two. Okay, if we look at our sample data here, let's look at here's our max, here's our min. So to find your mid range, you're going to subtract them and divide by two. Is that 16.5? Okay, and then example two, use sample describing my lead in the air. We need to find the mid range. So we would take the max, 5.4, minus our min, 0.42, divide by 2. Two 2.49. Okay, the mid-range is rarely used because it's too sensitive to the max and min extremes. So the outliers affect it. So that means it's not resistant. Three benefits of the mid-range, easy to compute, helps to reinforce that there are several ways to define the center of the data, sometimes incorrectly used for the median, so it helps to find, to show how to find the mid-range, how the mid-range is different from the median. So it's kind of like taking the, the mean of the max and min, that's what it looks like. 
Hey, calculator mid-range is not listed, but you can easily do it um, just by adding your max and min, dividing by two. Rule for rounding, carry one more des decimal place than is present in the original set of values. And then round only the final answer, not the intermediate values that occur during calculations, and do not round the mode. Okay, go ahead and read this page. Okay, let's look at that example. The mean of population is not necessarily equal to the mean of the means found from different subsets of the population. So if we found the mean of um, something to do with our school, and then um, we found the mean of another school, and then average those means together, or found the mean of those means. That's not the same as using all the data from our school and another school and finding the mean. So the mean of the means is different from the mean of the population. Does that make any sense? The mean of means is not the same as the mean of a population. So for example, for each of the 50 states, a researcher obtains the mean salary of secondary school teachers to be 42,210 data from the National Education Association. Is this the mean salary of all secondary school teachers? So does it say that it's the mean of all? They obtain the mean salary as secondary school teachers. So there's two ways to do that. They could take the mean salary of Texas, the mean salary of Louisiana, mean salary of New York, and then find the mean of that. Or they can find the salary of all secondary school teachers, the population, and find the mean of that. So um, I don't know what to write here. Is this the mean salary? Um, possibly. We don't really, we're really not given enough information. We would need the population mean. Not the mean of all states. Okay. Mean of frequency distribution. So we found a frequency distribution back in chapter two, I believe. So we are going to look at frequency distributions um, to find out more information. We are going to find the mean of a frequency distribution table. So you're going to first find the class midpoint of each interval. Multiply each class midpoint by its frequency. 
and then add these products to find the total of all sample values and divide the sum by the number of values. Number of sample values is the sum of F equals sum of the frequencies. So to find our, remember that what this stands for? It's our sample mean. X bar is our sample mean. It's found by doing our frequency times X. X is going to be our class midpoint. So you see F, class midpoint. We're going to multiply those and then do the sum of it. This means the sum of that. So we're going to find the sum of it by adding it. And then divide by how many frequencies there are total. Okay, so let's find the class midpoint. Class midpoint is what's in between here, the midpoint of this interval. So that's um, 0 0.19 divided by 2. 0 0.095. And remember, we're not rounding anything. We're keeping them just like they, they are. All right, and then this one, the midpoint would be 0.2 plus 0.39 divided by 2. 0 0.295. Halfway between here, 0. 0.4 plus 0. 0.59 divided by 2, 0. 0.495. The next one, 10. So those are all of our class midpoints. Okay, now we need to find out what F times X is. So we're going to multiply each one of these. 45 times 0 0.095. Multiply the table. So go into that 45 times... 0 0.095, 44, yeah. So that would be 4.18. Go ahead and do that for all of them. 6 times 0.295, what'd y'all get? Somebody tell me. Mm-hmm, 1.77. Next one is just times 1, so it's the same thing. And then times 0 is going to be 0. And then times 1 is going to be the same thing. Okay. Now this is sum, summation of F. That means we're going to add these values up. Add those up real quick. 44, 6, 1, and 1. What did we get? 52. We didn't need to do anything here. The next one is the sum of F times X. So that just means we're going to add these up. Okay, hey, what did that come out to be? Seven point seven four. Okay, so now we're trying to find our sample mean. So let's plug in what we know. We know what this is. It's seven point seven four. And then the sum of F is 52. So we divide that now. Sit up. It's my nudge him. He nudged himself. 
right, so it should be 0 0.149. So the mean of the data for rainfall for 52 weeks. Oh, it told us what it was, 52 weeks. Hmm. Um, is 0 0.149. All right, our last example for today, and then we'll finish the rest tomorrow. The following sample data are collected from a statistics class to so show how many cars were registered in each household. I want you to go ahead and do this on your own. So you'll work on that and then we'll go over it tomorrow.